Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, someone asked me to go over the different settings I have in the iMenus of my Z cameras. That's what we're going to do today. I have a number of different Z cameras and I have them all set up identically. If you're curious about the gear that I'm currently using, I'll have a list of it in the description below this video. Now, of course, to get to the I menu on your camera, just hit the I button on the back of the camera. Now, I'm going to go over the different functions that I have in my I menus, and then I'm going to show you how you could edit your I menu to your liking. Let me clear up some terms first. You have 12 different functions you could have in the I menu. Each of those functions has settings that you could set. So you could set a function in here for your I menu and the setting of that function. All right. So I'll go over this real quick. Um, on my I menu currently, in the top left hand corner, I have silent photography. If you press the OK button on the back of your camera, you could see that you could set that off or on. Sometimes I need to shoot silently. I don't like to, but if I do, I could easily switch it with the I menu. Next to that, I have quality raw. I almost exclusively shoot raw, but every now and then I need to shoot raw in JPEG. I could switch that setting there. Next to that is flash mode. I'm always using different flash modes, so I'm easily, I could easily access that setting there. Next to that is shutter type. I have mine set to auto shutter, but every now and then I need to use an electronic shutter. So I could do that there. Next to that I have release mode. I most often use single frame, but if I need to switch to high speed continuous, I could do that there as well. Next to that I have AF area mode. I most often use single point AF, but if I need to choose one of the other um, area modes, I'm able to do that there. Below that is focus mode. Um, I most often shoot in AF-S mode, so I'm able to do that there. Next is vibration reduction. I always have that on, but every now and then, if I have my camera on a tripod, I will turn that off. So I'm, I could easily access it there. Next to that is auto bracketing. I shoot brackets quite often, so I could access very e that very easily right there. Next to that is metering mode. I'm most often in spot metering, but every now and then I switch over to matrix metering and I could do that there. Next to that is exposure delay mode. Um, I have remotes or a remote, a remote that works with my Z cameras, but I, I often forget it. So if I have my camera on a tripod and I'm worried about vibration when I press the shutter button, I could delay the exposure uh, up to three seconds here. So that's why I have that on my I menu. And finally, white balance. Um, I usually have it in auto mode, but every now and then I will switch it to a different mode and I have that there. So those are the functions that I have in my I menu. And you saw the settings that are there right now at least. Now, how could you edit your I menu? What you need to do is tap on the menu button on the back of your camera. Then what you need to do is go up to custom settings menu, go over and down to controls, hit the OK button, then customize I menu, and then you'll see you have those 12 different functions here. If you want to change any of these, just hit the OK button on the back of your camera, and then you could go and pick something different. Like if I wanted focus shift shooting in this first spot, I could just highlight that, press the OK button, and now focus shift is there. Now, I really don't want that. I want it silent there, so I'll switch it there. So you could switch all 12 of these functions to your liking. Now, here's the part where it gets a little bit confusing. Um, you could have a different I menu for U1, U2, and U3. So you could have three totally unique I menus. On my cameras, I have them set all the same all the same I menu functions, but the settings in those functions are different in U1, U2, and U3. Also, um, manual mode, aperture priority mode, shutter priority mode, 
program mode and auto mode all share a different eye menu so you could have four different eye menus uh, on your camera so what i do is i decide in my head what settings i want to use for u1 meaning aperture priority mode or manual mode or shutter priority mode i put my camera in that mode then i'll come over here and i'll go to um, controls of the custom setting menu, customize eye menu, and then I put all the functionality that I want to have in U1. Even though I'm in A mode, in, in aperture priority mode, I'm thinking what, I, what do I want in U1. So I put that all here, all those functions here. Then what I'll do is after I do that, I'll go over to the eye menu itself and I'll set this up for the settings I want for those functions for U1. For U1, I want to use a release mode of single frame. For U1, I want to use an AF area mode of single point AF. For U1, I want to use AF-S. So I switch all these settings. Okay, then what I do is I will go back to the menu once I have the settings set. And then I go down to Setup Menu over to save user settings, and then I save those to U1. All right, so you save your settings to U1. Once they're saved to U1, U1 is set up. Now, since I use the same exact functions in U2, but the settings of those functions are different. Now, I hope that made sense, all right? So I use the same exact functions in my eye menu for U2, but the settings are different. I'll come down now and save those functions. I'll save that to U2 as well. Then what I'll do, knowing what uh, settings I'm going to be using for U2, I'll go back to the eye menu. Then I'll change these to the settings I want to use for U2. For example, for U2, I don't want AF-S. I want AF-C. For U2, I don't want um, AF area mode to be single point AF. I want it to be wide area AF people. So I switch all these for U2, all right? Then once I have the settings set up for U2, then what I'll do is I'll go back to the menu and I'll go over to save user settings and I'll save those to U2 as well. Finally, for U3, it, I want the same functions there as well. So I'll save those functions to U3 and then I'll go over again to the um, I menu itself and I'll change these settings of those functions for U3. Then once I have those set up, I go back to menu, save user settings and save those to U3. So I have the same functions in U1, U2 and U3 but I have different settings for each of those functions in U1, U2, and U3. And to show you that, let me go to the I menu. Let me go up to U1. Now you could see that those are the functions I have in U1 and the settings for those functions. For AF area mode, you could see that it's single point AF. But if I go to U2, you could see that it isn't single point AF. It is auto area AF. The function is the same. The setting of that function is different. Also, I have AF-C here. So those two settings are different. Now, if I go to U3, you'll see that I have AF area mode set up to auto area AF animals. And then I have AF-C here and so on. So I have these different settings uh, for my um, U3. But you'll also notice U2 and U1, if you look in the top left hand corner, those are in aperture priority modes. U3 is a manual mode. So to save that, I actually had to switch my camera into manual mode with these settings for the I menu down there and then save that. While I'm in manual mode on the ca camera, I save those settings to U3. So I hope that made sense because it can get confusing. Then. I had to do this for all the Z cameras I own. So it was actually very time consuming. And what I did was I actually wrote down the settings I wanted. I drew squares on a piece of paper and wrote down the different functionality 
that I wanted to use in each of the cameras. That made it a lot easier. I didn't have to rely on me uh, memory or keep referencing back to a different camera. I had a little piece of paper in front of me and I knew that I had silent mode, silent photography here. I had image quality here, I had flash mode here, and so on. And then I even refined it down further, the different settings I used in U1, U2, and U3. So hopefully that, that helped. I know it gets very confusing. But that's how I have my iMenu set up. If that helps you set up your iMenu, I'm very happy if it does <laughs> because it can get confusing. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.